Hello, my name is Martin Woolley. I work for BlackBerry and I'm a member of the developer relations team. I'm based in the UK where I do lots of work around areas such as NFC and Bluetooth with my friend and colleague John Murray. Now today I'd like to tell you a story about BlackBerry 10 technology and about how John and I used it to solve a real world problem. Now if you're of a nervous disposition, take care because there's drama, there's even trauma in the story I'm about to tell you. But don't worry because it does have a happy ending and it features both a hamster and a chicken. So what more could you want? Let's proceed. Now I'm sure you've heard the phrase the Internet of Things. Well today's story is about the Internet of Things that disappear. Now John and I like to think of ourselves as quite cultured individuals. We like the arts. We're well read. We like Shakespeare, Dickens, Voltaire. But surely the pinnacle of mankind's artistic endeavours has to be the stoner movie. And it's with reference to that great American classic, Dude, Where's My Car? that I'd like to present an alternative story, Dude, Where's My Keys? You probably know the expression, a place for everything and everything in its place. I'm a believer in that philosophy. I'm good at losing things, I'm good at being unable to find things, so I attack that problem through being organised. And in my house I have a key box, which is the place where keys are supposed to live. Now imagine my shock and horror the other day when I went to the key box to look for my house keys, and they were not there, they were not on their designated peg. I was alarmed, I was shocked, I was worried. Where were my keys? I talked to John about my terrible, terrible experience losing my keys and we set about thinking about technology and whether BlackBerry 10 technology could help us with problems like this. And we kind of had this vision of our things, like our keys, being able to talk to us. How could we realise such an ambitious technological vision, we wondered. Well, we set about brainstorming and, and left no area out of bounds. We considered all manner of things, but quickly discounted most of them as, as being, well, basically a waste of time. A well-trained hamster that could locate your keys? Well, maybe, but we didn't see that as a reliable uh, solution and we didn't really see how we'd leverage BlackBerry 10 technology uh, taking that approach. Eventually, we settled upon Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, as the way in which we could attack this problem. So we set out with the goal of creating a solution which would allow things like keys to somehow announce their whereabouts and we wanted to control the whole process using a BlackBerry 10 application. So our first job was to do some research. And our first port of call was the Bluetooth.org website where we quickly scanned down the list of GAT specifications for the various profiles that were available and located this one, the Find Me profile. Now the Find Me profile, as you can see here in the abstract, defines the behaviour when a button is pressed on one device to cause an alerting signal on a peer device. So this sounded like exactly the kind of thing that we needed. And we could see that uh, the Find Me profile was dependent upon one service called the Immediate Alert Service. And it turned out that the Immediate Alert Service was pretty simple. It has a UUID of hex 1802 and scrolling down we can see that it has a single characteristic, the alert level, which is a control point that allows the peer to command this device to alert to a given level. And this is clearly done using a write without response command as well. OK, so we knew what we wanted to exploit and set about developing a BlackBerry 10 application that would use this GAT service. Now obviously to be able to test our application we were going to need a Bluetooth device that was running the immediate alert service. Now you can buy devices like this, key fob finders, um, from retailers uh, but when we did this work we didn't actually have one. 
What we did have though was a piece of kit from Texas Instruments that is programmable. It's a Bluetooth device and you can load firmware onto it and depending on the firmware you load it with it will take on particular Bluetooth capabilities. In other words it will run particular services. So we loaded some firmware onto it and turned our Texas Instruments CC2540 device into a Bluetooth device that's running the immediate alert service just like one of those commercially available key fob devices. Now the Texas Instruments device comes with some software, uh, a tool called BTool and I can use this to connect to other Bluetooth devices and explore their GAT characteristics and services. So let's just quickly see what we have running on the CC2540 programmable device. So I start by clicking scan. If you look at the slave BDA field here, that's Bluetooth device address, we've already found something. If I now click the establish button, I'll establish a connection to it. And if you look at the top left hand corner, you'll see that device appear in the list. There we go. So I have a device here with a handle of 0000, and that is my um, key fob device. Now to see details of what it's running, if I open up that window so you can see some more, I'm going to go into the GAT commands and run the discover all primary services command. I can go further by looking for characteristics, further again by getting their descriptions. So bit by bit I can build a view of exactly what this device has on it. Now from the Bluetooth documentation I know that the UUID of the immediate alert service is 1802. So if we take a look at the services here we'll find that in reverse order of bytes, so least significant first, I have 0218, that's 1802 there. So this service is the uh, immediate alert service. And the characteristic we can see there underneath the service declaration with UUID 2A06, that's the alert level characteristic of our service. So next I'm going to show you the finished Find Me application and having done so we'll take a look at the code behind the app and find out how we went about creating it. So here's our BlackBerry Z10 with our application and next to it the Texas Instruments key fob device which has firmware loaded on it so it's now running the immediate alert service. I've just activated it by pressing a button. So let's launch our application here on the Z10 and have a look at what it does. You can see it there on the home screen next to our heart monitor application. We've previously paired the Texas Instruments device so it'll appear on the screen listed. We can see Bluetooth is enabled. We can see we haven't yet selected one of the devices. We have now and now it's connecting to the immediate alert service. Done. We now have some buttons we can press. This sends a Bluetooth command and changes the alert level characteristic value. In this case you can see the response is to beep and flash the LED green. We select the mild level, the characteristic gets given a different value and we get a, an appropriate response. So attaching this to your keys means you'll never lose them again. So what's involved in coding an application like the Find Me application that we just saw? Well, from a very high level, we need to do three things. And some of these areas we already covered in our video and blog post on using a heart rate monitor. So I won't repeat myself here, but we have to do some initialization to switch on things in the Bluetooth stack. Uh, we have to discover and allow the selection of uh, a device that runs our target service, in this case the immediate alert service. We have to connect to that service on the selected device. And then, and here's where things get unique to this particular application, we need to write a new value into the alert level characteristic of the immediate alert service on our selected and paired Bluetooth device. So let's look at some code now. I'm in the Momentix IDE and I've gone into my BTLE Find Me project. Now this is a Cascades native application 
and so I have a mixture of QML resources and C++. I have open in front of me here the main QML file and I'm going to take a quick look at that before we delve into some of the key areas of the C++. Again I'm not going to cover in detail areas we already covered in our heart rate monitor video and blog post. But it's interesting to see how easy it's been to integrate C++ functionality from QML components. As we scan down the QML file we'll see that there are numerous mentions of underscore BTLE. Now this is a reference to a C++ object uh, which has various methods that we're making use of direct from within our QML page. So attached to this button for example I'm calling the Bluetooth uh, LE objects send alert off method and here I'm calling send alert mild and here I'm calling send alert high. If you continue to scroll down you'll see we have some image labels and these are the um, labels that uh, include LED style indicators of status so things like whether the Bluetooth service is switched on or not uh, whether we've selected a paired device to work with whether we've yet connected to the immediate alert service on that device and you'll see that once again we're using underscore BTLE um, in line in our JavaScript properties here so that I can invoke methods of that C++ object direct from QML which is great really nice and easy way to code Let's look at some of the C++ now and find out exactly how um, some of that code works. So this is the BTLE find me C++ class and you can see that the first thing we do in this class is create a Bluetooth LE object. Now Bluetooth LE is one of our classes again it's part of this application as opposed to one of the API classes. Now down here we call set context property on a QML document object and the purpose of this call is to associate the handle BTLE underscore BTLE which you saw me using in QML uh, with our Bluetooth LE object and that's the way that uh, we expose that object to QML uh, which we become able to uh, invoke its methods direct from QML. Now back in our QML just as a reminder, here's one of the examples of the use of one of the Bluetooth LE uh, methods that we've just exposed by registering in the QML documents context. And here we're calling the Bluetooth active method, which returns a Boolean. And we can have a look at what happens uh, in that method by looking at the Bluetooth LE C++ class. So there it is. There's our method, Bluetooth active, uh, returns a bool. And it simply invokes and returns the result of the BlackBerry 10 Bluetooth API function BT LDEV get power LDEV is local device so that's all we're doing there and that's how we determine whether or not Bluetooth is switched on on the BlackBerry 10 device. Our application also has a class called findmeservice.cpp now when we select a device to work with from the UI one of the things that happens is we go through the process of connecting to the immediate alert service on that device and this is the method that is used to achieve that, it's called connect to immediate alert service. And if we scroll down in the code here we'll see that all we actually do is make use of one API function, so this is a BlackBerry 10 Bluetooth API function called btgat connect service and we specify the uh, address of the device that was selected by the user and the UUID of the immediate alert service which we defined to have the value of 1802 um, higher up in our code in the constructor. You'll notice we also define a constant with um, hex value 2A06 for the immediate alert level characteristic and we use that later on. So how do we actually get the device to beep to start issuing its alert? Well back in our QML we have our three buttons and as you saw they each invoke methods of our Bluetooth LE object. We've got send alert off, send alert mild and send alert high. So if we look at the Bluetooth LE class back in C++ here are those three methods and if we focus on send alert high as an example you'll see that it calls a couple of methods on our find me service um, class. 
and the first simply sets um, a class variable to a value that represents off, mild or high and the second initiates the sending of a Bluetooth GAT command to change the value of the alert level characteristic uh, within the Im immediate alerts service. So let's take a look at the Find Me service class and how it does that. So here we are, send alert request. Uh, we've previously changed the value of our alert level variable in this object. And then all we do, it's very simple, is use a single BlackBerry 10 Bluetooth API function, btgat write value no resp. So this is writing to a given service, in this case the immediate alert service, the new value to be assigned to the characteristic whose handle is in this variable here. And this is the handle or temporary identifier of the alert level characteristic in the device. And we collected that handle during the device pairing and service connection uh, procedure that we haven't looked at in any detail. So it's a pretty simple um, function call, conceptually simple and simple from a technical point of view. We have to say which service which characteristic um, instance we want to change and to what value we want to change it. And no resp because we're not expecting a response back. And that's it, that's all we need to do to set the device into an appropriate state to cause it to beep with a loud noise, with a medium level noise or to switch off the beeping because it's annoying us now. So that's the end of our review of the Bluetooth Find Me profile and its associated immediate alert service. Hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you found it useful and very much look forward to seeing you in the BlackBerry developer community go and do some exciting things with this technology. So I'll leave you with some information about various resources that I think you should find useful. There's lots of code in our GitHub repositories. Um, the BTLE Find Me application that we were looking at in this video presentation, you'll find the source code for that in our Cascades Community Samples repository. John and I wrote an article called the BlackBerry 10 Bluetooth LE Primer for Developers, which if you're new to this subject, you should find very useful. It's a great place to start. And the rather long URL for it is shown there on the slide. And we've also written a few uh, blog posts in our developer blog devblog.blackberry.com and we'll continue to do so. Finally, if you'd like to make contact with us, ask us questions or just have a, a kind of chat about BlackBerry 10 related stuff, we're both on Twitter. My handle is MDWRIM and John's is JCMRIM. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for listening.